Okay, we're going to look at an example here where we're going to find the absolute extrema of a function on this region R that we're given. Okay, so before we jump in and just start uh, working, I want to think a little bit about what the theorems tell us. So first of all, we have a function here. This function is a polynomial function, and it's continuous everywhere on all of R2. So it's continuous also on the region R that we have here because that region is part of R2. Uh, our region R over here is closed. The boundary is all included. All of the boundary points of the region are included in the region. And it is a bounded region. It does not go off to infinity. So we have a continuous function on a closed and bounded region. So extreme value theorem tells us that we will have both a maximum and a minimum value of this function on this region. Okay, so then we want to think about how we actually find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of this function on the region. All right, so I'm just going to kind of discuss an overview and then we'll jump in and do the steps. So the first main step that we want to think about is we want to find the critical points of our function that are on the interior of our region. And we'll do that by thinking about where the gradient vector for the f function is equal to zero or does not exist. So that will give us our critical points. If we find any that are outside of our region R, we want to make sure we discard those. Then the second thing that we'll need to do is consider the boundary. And here I have three boundary equations because I have a triangle. So I'm going to substitute each of those boundary equations into my function f. And then along each of those boundary equations, I need to think about where the function might have extreme values. So I'll essentially be doing kind of a reduced variable extreme value theorem problem on those boundaries. And then the third thing that I'll need to do is decide not only do I have maxima or minima, but which one's the largest and the smallest because I want to find the absolute extrema. So I'm going to evaluate my function at all of the points that I got from kind of steps one and two here. So at all of the critical points that are on the interior of the region, at any critical points that are on the boundary, and then also at any end points of the boundary. And I'll just choose the largest and smallest function outputs to be my absolute maximum and absolute minimum values. Okay, so let's start here um, finding the critical points that are on the interior. Uh, so our gradient vector will be 3x squared minus 3 in the first component and 6y squared minus 6y minus 12 in the second component. I'm going to set that equal to the zero vector. And so often I just kind of go to this next step where I write my system of equations where I've got my partial derivative of f with respect to x and I'm going to set that equal to zero and my partial derivative of my function with respect to y and I'm going to set that equal to zero. And so essentially I'm going to be solving this system of equations here. So it's perfectly fine if you go right to that step. The other thing that's important to think about is if there's any place where your gradient vector does not exist, we won't have that issue on this problem since my function is a polynomial function. All of its partial derivatives are polynomials, so all of the derivatives will exist everywhere, so we won't have that on this problem, but occasionally you will have to think about where the gradient vector maybe does not exist. Okay, when I solve this system, this system decouples, so my equations are independent of each other. This first equation will give me some x values, x equals plus or minus 1. That should be pretty easy to see. You can divide through by 3 and add 1 to both sides and square root both sides. The second equation, I might need to write out a little bit more work. You can factor out a 6 or divide through by 6. And then what you're left with will factor nicely. Since these two equations are independent of each other, we'll actually have four critical points here. All right, I want to think about whether these critical points are actually in my region, in the interior of my region here. So uh, my first critical point over one up to, I don't really have a scale on my axes here, but you should be able to figure out that that's above that line that goes from zero, zero through four, four. So that one is in our region. Negative one, two, however, is not in our region. So I'm going to discard that point. It might be relevant if I were looking at some other region, but not in this region. Uh, my other two points, 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1 are also both not in our region. So we're going to discard those. So the only point that I'm really going to consider for this problem 
is my 0.12, my only critical point. All right, the next main step will be to consider my boundary equation. So I need to think about the boundaries here. I have three boundaries. I'm gonna go ahead and write my equations for each of my boundaries here. So this next part here about the boundaries, I'm really gonna have that separated into three separate parts here where I think about each boundary equation and substitute those into the original function. Okay, so I've written down each of my three boundary equations here, and the other thing that will be relevant about these is that I don't really want the entire line x equals zero. If we go back and look at the picture, I don't really want the entire line x equals zero. I just want the part that goes from y equals zero to y equals four. So for each of these, I'm gonna add some restrictions so that we remember we don't really want the whole line. We just want part of it. Okay, so this part is really almost like three separate problems here. I'm gonna substitute each of these equations into my original function. So I'm gonna go back up to my original function and every place I have an x, I'm gonna start by substituting in x equals zero. And so I'll write down the function that I have left and then consider that function. Okay, so after I've substituted in x equals zero, this is what I'm left with. And basically at this point now, what I wanna do is find the extreme values of this function, this single variable function on this interval where y goes from zero to four. So in essence, this is now like a calculus one extreme value theorem problem. So what I'm gonna do is find the critical points of this function. I'm gonna go ahead and take the derivative of this now single variable function set that derivative equal to zero and solve for y. All right, so I got two y values here. Remember that we're along the boundary x equals zero, so these are really ordered pairs. x is gonna be zero and y will be two or negative one. Uh, remember that our y needed to be between zero and four though, so one of these doesn't satisfy that requirement. Zero, two is actually in my region, but zero, negative one will not be. You can go back up here to look at the graph again also. So zero, two be in the region, but zero, negative one would not be. So we would discard that one. All right, so the other place so far that I have where my extreme values might occur would be at this point, zero, two. That's a critical point along the boundary, on the boundary x equals zero. The other place from Calc 1, remember that you found critical points, but then you were also needed to consider the function outputs on the end points. So I also need to think about the end points of that boundary. So we're at x equals zero, and then y is going from zero to four. So I have one end point at zero, zero, and the other end point at four zero four. So I really have three points here that I need to consider from that boundary. For my next boundary, y equals four, again, I'll go back to the original function. I'll substitute y equals four every place there's a y. Okay, so I now have a function of one variable, so I'm going to go ahead and take that derivative and set that derivative equal to zero. So I got x equals plus or minus one. Again, remember we're on the boundary y equals four. So that really is two points, one comma four and negative one four. Only one of those is actually in my region. Only one four is in my region. Negative one four is gonna be left of the region that we're interested in. And then I also need to consider the end points. So one four is the critical point on that boundary. And then I also have end points of that boundary. All right, I have one more boundary equation to consider. So I'm gonna substitute y equals x into the function, which means I'll get a function either completely in terms of x or completely in terms of y. It doesn't really matter. So when I've substituted in place of the y, I put x in place of y. So this is what I get. I'm gonna go ahead and combine some like terms here. And then I need to find the critical points on this boundary. So I'll find that derivative and set that equal to zero. Okay, so I got two x coordinates here. We're along the line y equals x. So each of these will have a y coordinate that goes along with it. So when x is 5 thirds, since y is equal to x, we'll also have y equals 5 thirds. And then when x is negative one, we'll also have y equals negative one. So again, I need to make sure that these points are actually in my region. If I go up to my region here and think about these two points, 5 thirds comma 5 thirds is gonna be on this boundary of my region over here. 
that negative 1, negative 1 will be outside my region, so we'll discard that. All right, so I have one more critical point from here. I also have the end points from this boundary. Okay, so I now have a bunch of points that I need to consider function outputs for. So I'm just going to make a big chart and include all of my points in my chart here. All right, so I need to plug all of these values into my function. This is where you get out your calculator and you plug all of these numbers into your function. I'm just going to write my function outputs over here in my second column. Okay, so I've evaluated my function at all of my points. My first one here was a critical point that was in the interior of the region. My next three were critical points that were along the boundaries of the region. And then the last three here were the end points of each boundary, or maybe we call those the vertex points. So what I'm really looking for, though, is I'm looking at all of these function outputs, and I'm looking for the largest function output. That will be my max value, so that would be 84. So we would say that the maximum value of this function is 84, and that occurs at the point 4, 4. And then looking through these values for the lowest value, the minimum value of the function, our minimum value is negative 22, and that occurs at the point 1, 2. Okay, so try some of these problems. These can be kind of long, but uh, nothing in the steps is especially hard. It's just a matter of making sure you don't get lost in the middle.